All right, now we can create mosaics with this new version of Serial. One of the features I was really excited about. First thing I want to say is this workflow is not for the smart scope. So for those of you with the C stars, I will be putting out a video shortly that shows you how to use the data out of the C stars to create your mosaics. But for now, this workflow is for a traditional setup. So I got quite a bit to cover here. We're going to talk about the importance of camera rotation first. Then we're going to go over how to create your panels in preparation for stitching them together into a mosaic. There are recommendations that Serial has put forth for us to get the best possible end result. So we're gonna cover that both manually, and then I also put a script together that will take those manual steps and automate it for you when you're creating just your panels. Then we'll talk a little bit about existing panels you may have or how you can actually still use the OSC pre-processing script to create your panels. And then at the end, we'll show you how to stitch them all together and get the best possible result. So all right, enough talking, let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so before we actually get into the mosaic feature in Serial, I want to talk about how we plan to shoot a mosaic. I use Nina, so I can only assume that other acquisition software is similar. But the most important thing that you need to do is make sure that you have your camera rotation correct. What I mean by that is first select your target, click your slew and center button. Once it's complete and your object is centered in your field of view, the next thing that you want to do is click your determine rotation from camera button. If you don't do that, then what you see here as my field of view, if I was to just start adding panels, this gives you the incorrect assumption that this is what your mosaic is going to look like. You're going to expect your image to look the way it does on my screen right now once the four panels are stacked together. But instead, you'll end up with something like this. You can see the dark areas in the corners, and that's because the camera rotation was not properly determined before I shot the mosaic. And what's happening here, as you can see in this image, is each of the panels are centered, but that rotation is occurring in the center of each panel, not the center of the entire mosaic. So that's why it's important to make sure your rotation is set properly first. So before you even set your panels, you slew to your object and it's centered in your field or view, click your determine rotation from camera button. That will show you your current camera rotation. And then at that point, it will plate solve again, just like it did when it's slewed and centered. But this time it'll come back and for example, maybe it'll show me that my rotation is like this. If I'm happy with that, then I can add my panels. If I wanna change that rotation, then I can use the slider and I can move it, and then I can come and hit my down arrow button next to the slew and center, and this time hit slew, center, and rotate. And depending on your setup, if you have an automatic rotator, then it'll rotate it for you. If you're using the manual rotator in Nina, then it'll prompt you which direction and how many degrees to rotate your image. So I know it's a little long-winded, but bottom line is you must make sure you determine your camera rotation before you lay out your panels and before you start your imaging session. Okay, now that I've shot all four panels of my mosaic, I'm ready to pre-process and stack each of those panels in preparation for stitching them together. Now, there are recommendations from Cyril that will change the workflow a little bit. They are just that, the recommendations so you don't necessarily have to follow this. But following these extra steps helps ensure that your images and the final stack are nice and flat. So we're going to be running background extraction as well as undistorting the images. And all of us, unless you have a super high-end, crazy expensive telescope, you're going to have some optical distortion. So it's important to really flatten out the images before we get to the stitching phase. Again, I'm going to start with the manual process, but I am not going to go through the entire manual process of calibrating and registration and stacking. I'm assuming you know how to do that. If you don't and you're interested in it, I will leave a link up in the top corner here on a video that shows you how to do all this manually. I just wanted to point out the additional steps that you need to go through to insert into that workflow. So the first step is after your calibration, but before your registration, that's when we want to do the background extraction. So we're just going to use Cyril's background extraction. So up in image processing and then background extraction. And their recommendation is the interpolation method should be set to polynomial with a degree order of one. Put your sample points down, just like always, keep them off of the actual nebula and then you can compute the background make sure it looks the way that you're expecting you can see it did remove the gradients for us and before clicking apply you want to make sure you tick apply to sequence and this is the option that will apply the background extraction to each individual frame within this sequence 
So we'll click apply and let that finish. And once it's done, then we can move over to our registration step. We're gonna come up into tools, astrometry, and image plate solver. And we need to plate solve the current image that we have open for the undistortion piece to work, which will be our next step. So as always, ensure that your right ascension, declination, your focal length, your pixel size, everything is correct. It should be because it's pulling it from the fits header and just click OK. It's plate solved. So now we can go into registration. Under registration, you'll see a new option for undistortion. You have three things to choose from here. So for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna use from image, but you could also, when we plate solve, we could have saved that information out to a file, or we could have also created and made distortion masters. But again, just to keep it simple, click from image. So it'll pull the plate solving from the image and then click go register. Once registration has completed, then you can jump over to your stacking tab and go through your stacking process as you normally would. So those are the additional manual steps that you would need to take when pre-processing and stacking your panels manually. Now, I've put together a script that goes through all those steps for you. So that's what I'm going to show you next is we'll get the script installed and run through it real quick. So the script is in Serial's repository. So all we need to do is come up to our menu item, click on Get Scripts. And then in the list down here, if you sort by the script column, all of my scripts in the repository start with DSA. So they'll be alphabetized for you. And you wanna look for this one right here, the OSC pre-processing with BGE and undistort. Just put a tick mark next to it and click apply. So just to double check, we'll come up into the scripts, serial script files, and you'll see the new script right here. Before we run it, I'll show you what the folder structure looks like. And this script is literally the OSC pre-processing script with the background extraction piece added, the plate solve piece added, as well as the undistortion piece. So it works the same way as the OSC pre-processing in that you need to have your four directories in your working directory. So lights, flats, darks, and biases. And obviously your lights go into your lights your flats and your flats, so on and so forth. So once you have your folder structure ready, just come back over in a serial, set your working directory. We are working on panel two, click open, and then just come up into the scripts, serial script files, and run the new script that you just installed. It'll take a couple minutes as usual. So I'm gonna pause the video and we'll be right back. Okay, so the script is completed. You can see on my screen, I'm running a development version right now, but the script's gonna work in the official release, so don't worry about that. I was, I'm just making this video ahead of time to have it ready to go once the, the new version is actually released to the public. So we'll just come over real quick and click our open button. There is our stack. So there's our final panel stack. So in my case, I have four panels. I could just use the script to pre-process and stack each of my four panels in preparation for stitching the mosaic together as a final image. The third thing that I wanted to talk about for stacking your panels is you can forego the recommendations. You don't need to use my script. You don't need to go through those additional steps that I showed you when we were doing it manually. You can just use the OSC pre-processing script that you're probably more accustomed to using. But stacking your panels this way foregoes that recommendation from Cyril and trying to get your stacked panels as flat as possible. But that can be taken care of during the stitching process as well. So again, I wanted to make sure you guys are aware of the recommendations from Cyril. You don't have to follow them. Worst case scenario, if you stack your panels using the OSC pre-processing script and when you stitch them together, if things just didn't look right, if you were seeing differences in those overlaps between the panels, then quite possibly you would have to go back and make sure that you flatten it by running the background extraction on the sequences, as well as undistorting the images before you actually stack them. So with all that being said, we now have our four panels and we are ready to start stitching them together. So this is my folder structure. Like I mentioned before, I have four panels of this area to create a mosaic out of. I have them all within the same folder. And the first thing that I do is create another folder and just call it process, name it whatever you want, it does not matter. And that's gonna be our new working directory for getting everything stitched together. So I'm gonna come back over into serial, hit my home icon, and we're going to go back into the process directory. That's gonna be my working directory that we just created and click open. We're gonna come over to the conversion tab and we wanna add our four panels into the conversion tab. You can drag and drop in here, but I'll use the plus button 
and I'm going to go over into panel one and there's my panel one stack and then just rinse and repeat for the other three panels. I'm going to come down into sequence and again you can call your sequence whatever you want. I'm just going to call it mosaic. Make sure symbolic link is ticked and the bear is not selected and click convert. So if we come over in our sequence tab now we'll see we have a mosaic sequence that contains our four panels. And now we want to plate solve the entire sequence. Okay, so I have to interrupt myself right here real quick. The panels that you're looking at are not the correct panels. These were panels from a previous test run that I did where I did not run the background extraction or the understort that we just went over. That's why you see a gradient. If you go back to where we were doing the panels in the video, you'll see they were nice and smoothed out for us. But it also brings up a good point. After you create your panels, if you do see a gradient, go ahead and run a background extraction against the sequence that contains your panels. You can use the polynomial like we did before, or the RBF interpolation method, or even Graxpert, just to try to make sure the gradients are completely removed. Fortunately for me, what you're going to see is I'm going to stitch these panels with the gradient, and the stitching actually handled taking everything out for me, and the image turned out very well at the end. But my apologies, I loaded the wrong panels, just going back and forth with my testing. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. So let's get to the next step, which is plate solving our mosaic sequence. So we're going to come over to tools, astrometry, and image plate solver. Just like before, make sure all your information is correct. We're going to come down and tick solve whole sequence. Just leave everything enabled by default. The one thing that I do want to mention is I currently have local star catalogs installed. And because of that, there is a missing option down here. And I'll show you a screenshot of it right here. If you don't have your local catalogs installed, you also want to make sure you tick this option that says fetch catalog for each image. Also, I want to point out by default, disable near search is ticked. We don't want a near search to happen. It'll just lengthen the amount of time it takes for this to happen. Disabling the near search prevents it from doing the cone search where it'll start in the center and it kind of works its way out as it's trying to plate solve the image. So just leave it ticked and click OK. It'll go through and it'll plate solve each of the four panels in my sequence for me. Once it's done, click close. You can see we have a green frame now around our image, just indicating that the astrometric registration information is present within this image. Now we'll move over to our registration tab. We're going to change our registration method to apply existing registration. We're going to change our framing method to maximum. And then we want to click the estimate button. Now, you don't have to click the estimate button, but depending on how many panels in your mosaic that you have, which will determine how large your final mosaic image is, you'll want to click estimate and review the size of the image. Reason being, there is a limitation within Cyril that neither the height nor the width of your image can exceed 32,768 pixels. It's not going to be able to display it in its entirety. If it is larger than that 32,768 pixels, you can continue on, you can still stitch it, and the final image will be complete. You'll just have to do your processing in another piece of software. They do have it slated to be corrected, so eventually one of the updates will allow us to open images larger than that, but just be aware of it for now. So I'm good right now. I'm not exceeding that 32,768, but if I did, and I didn't want to take it into another software to do my processing, I can scale it down. So if I was to bump this down to 0.5 and then hit my estimate, the size of my final mosaic dropped. So that's, that's a workaround so you can stay in serial and do everything. But we're going to put that back to one, hit estimate because I know I'm good with that, and then click go register. Once registration is completed, all it's left to do now is stitch it together. So we're going to come over to our stacking tab. We're going to make sure our method is average stacking with rejection. Our normalization is additive with scaling. Our pixel rejection, we want to set to no rejection. Weighting should be set to none. And then we have our stitching options. So the border feathering, this number is in pixels. So this is the amount of feathering that will occur in the overlaps as it's stitching the panels together. Something you just have to play with for this particular set of data. 50 seem to work well. So you can either punch the number in or you can use your slider over here, whichever you prefer, it does not matter. And then the normalization on overlaps. This comes into play if some of your panels mainly have nebulosity, but other panels are maybe just the background sky with stars. So normalizing on the overlaps may be what you need to select to smooth everything out when it's doing a stitching process. I'm going to leave it off for now, 
and show you the results that we get with it with our feathering set to 50. You can also tick RGB equalization if you want. That way the image doesn't look so green when it's done, but that is optional and, and up to you. And then just click start stacking. Okay, so the stitching is complete. First thing I wanna point out are the black areas around the border, right? You always have some kind of, of tilt going on in your mosaic, and, and this is acceptable, this is fine. If you remember the image I showed you at the beginning of the video where camera rotation was not determined before I imaged the panels, this is what you can expect to see, just a little bit of blackness around the edges, and obviously that would all be cropped out before we started processing. The second thing to point out is you can see the panel stitching, right? This is what I was talking about. Nebulosity exists in some of the panels and there's more of a background sky in some of the other ones. So if I come back over to stacking and run it again and tick on normalization on overlaps, and then just click start stacking again, it'll restitch the image for you. And you can see much better, nice and smooth across everything. But again, I wanna go back over to the stacking tab. And like I was mentioning, setting your feathering. If the number that you choose for the feather, if you still see some lines coming through where your panels are overlapped and stitched together, then just come back in and adjust this number and click start stacking again. It will just overwrite the existing file that it has open now with the new feathering parameters. So you can go back and forth with that and see what works for you the best. So at that point, we're done. Now it's just about processing the image. So I'm not gonna go through it all, but just like I said, we would crop out all of the black that we have here right click crop and crop and then i would go through and run my background extraction and my color calibration whatever your normal workflow is for processing any image some things to keep in mind this is a large image now right this is four images versus just a single image so you will notice some things run slower this whole process can be resource intensive so if you don't have a, a good machine with enough resources not only will it add time, but you may even see delays as you're running through certain processes, meaning when you crop and you click crop, it may not be instantaneous. You may notice it waits a few seconds before the crop is completed. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. So that's Mosaics and Cyril. I know it's a feature all of us, including myself, were waiting for for a very long time. If you guys have any questions about the workflow, drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I want to take this time to say thanks to all my members, both here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate everybody's support. Thanks to all of you that watch my videos, like them, share them, comment. All that interaction really helps the channel grow. So we're going to wrap it up for this one. We'll see you on the next one in clear skies.